Hi, and welcome to the next episode of The Culture Coach. Today, what I'd like to talk about is uh, the importance of the leadership to create culture, or the importance of leadership within culture, if you like. So, uh, let's, let's call it unleashing the power of leadership and inspiring others to soar. So one of the statements that I like to make, uh, the quotes that I attribute to myself, is that I believe to be a leader, you must be driven to help others to be better and achieve more. Otherwise, that's not leadership. Okay, so leaders is about creating other leaders, or at least this is what I believe. So, leadership isn't really just about climbing to the top, it's about lifting others up as you rise. I mean, true leaders aren't content with personal success alone. Look, it, yes, it's important to them. Uh, they're, also driven by a deep desire to help others to become the very best versions of themselves that they can and achieve their own extraordinary results. The, the, I suppose the essence of impactful leadership lies in your ability to develop, empower and elevate those around you. When you shift your focus from a self-centred um, one of ambition to a I suppose a, a mission of collective achievement, you unlock a kind of profound maybe even transformational power. It's about moving from me to we. Um, personal accolades and achievements may bring you momentary satisfaction, but the true measure of a leader's legacy lies in the success stories of those that they've helped. So, great leaders, I feel, understand that their role is not just to steer the ship, but to ensure that everyone on board is thriving, growing and contributing to their fullest potential and at least being able to step up to steer that ship in the future. Now that kind of perspective changes the game. It fuels a culture of continuous development and relentless pursuit of excellence. By helping others reach the very top of their capabilities, leaders create a, a ripple effect of inspiration and achievement. And that kind of creates an environment where greatness becomes the, 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 the norm. You know, to be that kind of leader who leaves that kind of impact, you've got to commit to developing those around you. You've got to invest in their growth. And you've got to invest in their growth with the same intensity and passion that you bring to your own personal goals. You've got to teach, mentor and guide them with your goal to be making each of them shine. You've got to celebrate their wins. You've got to coach them through challenges and continually encourage them to expand their horizons. I, I guess what I'm saying is your legacy as a leader is not going to be measured by the heights that you personally reach, but by the summits that your people reach because of your influence. That kind of dedication to other success builds resilient, motivated, high-performing teams that not only achieve remarkable outcomes, but it's also carried forward in a spirit of empowerment and excellence. And that's the kind of culture that you need. So what about great cultures? What, what about great leaders and great cultures? What kind of identifies them, defines them? You know, it's really difficult, but I think there's a few things that we can discuss that um, probably covers most of the, the, the main key points. So, you know, it's, it's about great leaders have something that drives them, right? So the, the ones that achieve greatness uh, usually have some kind of burning passion that drives them forwards. And, you know, this, this kind of drive is it, it's often referred to as a vision, but they might not call it a vision. It might not be clearly defined at the outset either, but it originates from a deep-seated need or desire to change the world, or at least, the very least, to change the world around them. You know, this intrinsic motivation ignites their passion. It propels them to build an organisation capable of realising that vision, that change. And, I mean, a vision is a vivid picture of the future. That's what a vision is. It just means to see a, vi a picture of the future where the change they seek to bring about has already become a reality. That's what a vision is. It's more than just a goal. It's a um, compelling story that paints the world as they want it to be. 
And it's when leaders articulate that vision that it becomes a beacon for other people. It draws them in, it inspires them to share in that journey. And great leaders craft a, 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 a narrative, a story, so compelling that others can see their own futures in that vision. And then that becomes a shared vision, which becomes a really powerful tool for uniting a team. And when individuals see how their personal and professional growth aligns with the leaders or your vision, their own motivation skyrockets. They can become more committed, passionate, and willing to give their all to make that vision, that shared vision, a reality. A prime example, I suppose, can be seen in the um, work of people like Elon Musk, um, whose vision for space exploration with SpaceX or sustainable energy has rallied thousands to its cause. Right or wrong, whether you love him or hate him, it's, it, it, it's rallied people, it's attracted thousands to him. And his, his passion for a well-communicated vision inspires teams to push the boundaries of what's possible. And ultimately, the power of a leader's vision lies not just in its clarity or its scope, but in its ability to resonate with other people. If it's just for you, it won't work. It has to be about how it benefits the whole. It's about creating a shared purpose and painting a future that people are excited to build together. When a leader manages to, to, to do that and connects their vision with the aspirations of their team, They've got a powerful and motivated force of truly extraordinary achievements. Something else I think is true, and I think this gets overlooked a lot, is you need to lead with compassion, not necessarily empathy. Everybody out there thinks empathy is the, the answer to leadership, and I'm not so sure it is. It's often said that empathy is the cornerstone of impactful leadership, and yet yeah, empathy involves understanding and sharing the feelings of others. And while it's got its place, I believe that compassion is even more crucial. Empathy allows you to connect with others on a, an emotional level, but it doesn't always lead you to have a, a positive action or improvement. When you're too wrapped up in, the, in sharing the feelings of your team, it may hinder your ability to drive them to strive for better performance. Compassion, on the other hand, means you not only understand their feelings, which is key, but are also motivated to help them help themselves. Uh, that's the key difference, I think. Empathy does not mean you are motivated to help them help themselves. It means you understand and share their feelings. And although that's not necessarily a bad thing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're prepared to do what it takes to help them help themselves. And that distinction is a significant one. And I'm really passionate about emphasizing this to leaders out there. Compassion involves an actionable element of wanting to improve the situation and aid in the growth of those around you. It's about providing support while also encouraging personal responsibility and development. Think of it this way, if you will. Empathy might lead you to be overly accommodating to someone who is underperforming because you understand their own personal struggles and you don't want to impose additional pressure. Compassion, however, empowers you to help that person to improve, providing the necessary support and tools without undermining your standards or, or, or your own motivation. By guiding them towards better performance, you foster both their growth and the overall success of your team. When leaders show genuine care and compassion, and that, that is important, genuine care and compassion, they cultivate a culture of trust and safety. People feel understood and valued, which significantly impacts their willingness to step up and push beyond their limits. Knowing they've got a leader who genuinely cares for their well-being and development, individuals are much more likely to embrace challenges and strive for excellence. Consider a leader who notices a team member struggling with a project, for example. An empathetic response might be to ease their workload out of sympathy. A compassionate leader, however, would sit down with a team member, understand their difficulties, and then provide guidance, resources, and encouragement to help them overcome those challenges. This approach not only builds the team member's skills and confidence, but also demonstrates that the leader is invested in their long-term success. 
So while empathy allows you to connect on a personal level and is important, compassion drives you to take meaningful action. By integrating compassion and empathy into your leadership style, you create an environment where trust and personal growth can flourish. And that enables your team to achieve, again, remarkable results. So another really important thing, if you want to be um, a leader and create that culture of um, outstanding performance, you need to be a champion of growth. I don't mean necessarily business growth, I mean personal growth. So exponential growth occurs when leaders become champions of both personal and professional development, beginning with their own journey. True leaders are intrinsically motivated to learn. They continuously consume books, attend seminars, listen to influential figures and relentlessly pursue their own self-improvement. And that quest for growth doesn't just elevate their capabilities, it sets a powerful example for those around them. When leaders do this, when they embody that passion and drive for performance, for development, they naturally attract an, or, or cultivate a like-minded team. Their own enthusiasm for self-betterment creates a kind of ripple effect that then creates an environment and a culture where continuous improvement becomes the norm. In such a culture, team members are inspired to match their leader's dedication to growth and excellence. It becomes an expect. To facilitate that kind of environment, you need regular feedback, mentorship and opportunities for professional development and that become indispensable tools within the organisation. Yeah, and you need to provide constructive and frequent feedback. Um, great leaders are going to give team members clear paths for improvement and ensure that they feel valued and heard. And a mentorship goes a step further, offering, uh, offering, offering uh, personalised guidance and support that accelerates development and builds stronger, uh, more trusting relationships. You need to celebrate achievements as well, no matter the size. This is crucial. Um, recognition, whether through a simple word of appreciation, a simple thank you, or more formal acknowledgement, acknowledgement fuels the fire of progress. When individuals see their efforts recognised and valued, their motivation to excel is reinforced, creating a positive cycle of accomplishment and enthusiasm. For instance, consider the leader who introduces a structured mentorship programme within their own organisation. They pair seasoned professionals with less experienced team members, fostering a culture of knowledge and sharing and mutual growth. Alongside that, the leader regularly hosts um, celebration sessions where team wins, both big and small, are highlighted and celebrated. This not only builds camaraderie, but also re reinforces the value placed on individual and collective achievement. That kind of leader creates a culture that people want to work in. It's those leaders who invest in their own growth and in their team's growth who are laying the bricks for a solid foundation of confident, capable individuals. And those individuals will become well equipped to tackle any challenge that comes their way without the need for the leader to take a, 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 an active step involve, in, involving themselves in that, which makes them able to go and focus on other things. And that drives the organisation towards sustained, uh, sustained success because a leader can only do so much. An organisation led by such a leader uh, we'll see team members taking greater initiative, proposing innovative solutions of their own and collaborating more effectively without the need for the leader to be involved. And all because they feel supported in their growth. So when leaders um, invest well in their own development and the development of their team, they create a culture that thrives on continuous learning and improvement. That not only accelerates individuals' growth, but also propels the entire organisation towards exponential growth and success. Something else they need to be good at, they need to walk the talk. Walk the walk, walk the talk. 
So authenticity breeds respect. And that means you've got to lead by example. You've got to embody the values and worth ethic that you're preaching. This is why your own personal development and growth are critical to success. If you don't do it, your people won't do it. And if you're not able to build a culture that encourages, encourages growth and attracts the very best in external talent, then you're not going to have a very successful organisation. Leading by example is going to require you to have a deep-rooted um, embodiment of the values that you uh, put forth. Whether it's integrity, perseverance or innovation, these values need to be visibly reflected in your actions, in what you do and how you behave. And it needs to come across in your decisions on a daily basis. And when you exhibit these qualities, it will set a standard and build a reservoir of respect that encourages others to follow suit. Your personal development will serve as a beacon for your team. When you prioritise your own growth, you signal that advancement and learning are valued within this business. This then motivates your current team to seek growth but it also makes you highly appealing to top external talent. High caliber individuals want to be part of businesses where continuous improvement is a part of the culture and that starts with you the leader. Consistency in your actions underscores your commitment to these values. Inconsistent behavior will lead to confusion, usually mistrust and often disengagement. If your team sees you consistently upholding the standards you set, it reinforces that those are the standards that this business adheres to. This is the expectation of how we act in this organization. And that builds a cohesive, reliable environment. It fosters trust, and trust is the bedrock of any successful team. Integrity means making the decisions that are aligned with your stated values, with how you say that people should behave and react. Even when the decisions are tough, if you have ethical principles, you'll make the right decision. If transparency is a core value, be open about business challenges and decision-making process. That level of honesty will build credibility and will strengthen your relationship with your team because you're living your values. They'll know you stand by your principles, making it easier for them to understand what they should be doing and easier for them to do the same thing. When the world sees you living by those ideals, the kind of people you need to attract to help you deliver the future you want will sit up and take notice. Authentic leadership is magnetic. It draws people who value the same things as you do, whether that's integrity or consistency or growth. Potential recruits are not just looking for a job. They're looking for a place where they can thrive and be inspired. If you want top talent, that's what they're looking for. By living your values, you make your business a place that others want to come and join. Add to that. The team you already have will follow suit with enthusiasm and commitment. Your actions will become a roadmap for their success. And if they don't want to be on board, they will leave. When your team sees you walking the walk, they are more likely to adopt the same behaviours and attitudes. And that creates a, a, a work environment that's progressive, that's harmonious, where everyone seems to be aligned with the mission and values of the organisation. That's how it's done. If you want to cultivate that kind of culture that truly encourages growth, it's essential to actively demonstrate that commitment. You need to provide opportunities for learning. You need to encourage innovative thinking and celebrate achievements. You need to have a proactive stance on growth and improvement. And that will set the tone, making it clear that development is a shared priority. It's going to in, 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 in improve individual satisfaction. It's also going to drive the collective success, making your business a vibrant and dynamic place to work. It's, leadership is not a solo act. You can't do it on your own. It's impossible. It's a symphony of collective effort. There's no such thing as a self-made man or woman. Everyone has help. Everyone needs a team. And until you accept this fundamental truth, you'll always be stuck up in the startup stage, no matter how many years you work.
You need to foster an environment where seeking support, mentorship and coaching is the expectation, not the exception. This way, you'll create a committed group of individuals that create a culture where collaboration thrives, communication flows freely, and the team members encourage each other to share their ideas and work together towards common goals. It creates a collaborative culture that breeds innovation and resilience, which will eventually make your team unstoppable in the face of any adversity. And when you do that, you really do need to acknowledge and appreciate people's performance. I mean, recognition is a powerful motivator. And it's quite often that leaders never feel the need to take credit for a success or a breakthrough. They are, after all, about other people being better and achieving more. And yet the more your teams create, deliver, and the closer you will get to the vision for the future, you want to be real. The, the, the true secret of success is to let go of your need to be seen as the leader. And just focus on creating amazing teams that create other leaders so that you can move on to the next thing. True leaders understand that success is a collective effort. They resist the temptation to seek personal glory and instead shine the spotlight on their teams. It's important to remember that leadership is not about asserting dominance, but about lifting others up. When you encourage others to take ownership of their successes, you empower them to grow and contribute even more. So you need to acknowledge the hard work and contributions of your team on a regular basis. You need to recognize and celebrate achievements, big, small, irrelevant. It's crucial for maintaining high morale and motivation. Simple acts of appreciation, even just a heartfelt thank you, or highlighting an individual's accomplishment in a team meeting can have a profound effect on an employee's sense of worth and belonging. I mean, appreciation not only boosts morale, but it reinforces the importance of every person's role in the overall mission and vision. When team members feel that their efforts are seen and valued, they understand their integral part in the larger picture. That recognition helps to build a strong, cohesive team where everyone feels their contributions matter. That kind of regular recognition will underscore the shared vision, the shared goals of the business. By highlighting contributions and achievements, you're going to reinforce how each individual's work supports the broader objectives. This not only helps in maintaining alignment, but also fosters a sense of unity and purpose within the team. When people feel that their efforts are seen and valued, their dedication and engagement will soar. Employees who feel appreciated are much more likely to be invested in their work. They're much more likely to stay loyal to the organisation and go above and beyond in their roles. Increased engagement is going to translate into higher productivity, better levels of innovation and more overall success for the whole business. So making sure that you have a focus on recognition and appreciation is also going to po pave the way to create future leaders. When you consistently celebrate the successes of your team members and allow them to bask in their achievements, you're nurturing their leadership potential. When they feel encouraged and motivated, those people will be inspired to take on greater responsibilities and eventually lead their own teams with the same ethos of appreciation and support. An empowering culture begins with constant recognition, or at least involves constant recognition. You need to create an environment where acknowledgement is just a part of everyday work experience. Encourage peer-to-peer -peer recognition to build a whole community, a whole culture that values those contributions at all levels. As a leader, your role is to set the standard and model the behaviour that you want to see throughout the whole business. So, in conclusion for this month, Leadership is about igniting the potential winner within others. It's driving them to reach heights they themselves had not before dreamed. So that they can achieve more. So they can be better. By focusing on a, that kind of vision that includes everyone. By leading with compassion. By championing growth. 
setting the standard, fostering collaboration, and recognizing that it's the contribution of, uh, of others that ultimately create your own success, you will create a powerful force for change. And leaders who are committed to helping others transform not only propel their, propel their teams forward towards success, but also experience profound fulfillment along the way. If you want to create, if you want to reach your own potential, then create a culture that allows others to reach theirs. Thank you for joining me this month. I'm Andy Water from Andy Water Associates. If you've got any comments, if you've got any feedback, if you've got any um, uh, need to discuss your own culture, get in touch.